in the house of worship this morning. Lord, we cannot invite your presence because your presence is already here. Amen. And so, Lord, as we tabernacle with your people, I ask God that you'll pour out your spirit upon each one here today. And so, Lord, as we will experience new birth this morning, we pray, Lord, that you might revive something within us. That as today, as we witness one of the greatest experiences that man can ever experience. I pray that you will touch our hearts and bring us closer to thee. And so, Lord, as we commence this service, we commit everything into your care and keeping, and we give you all the honor and praise. In the name of Jesus, amen. 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 Good morning, church. Good morning. God is good. All the time. And all the time, I want us to turn to our Bibles to Acts chapter 8. Acts chapter 8, and we'll read from verse 26 in your hearing. Now the angel of the Lord spoke to Philip saying, Arise and go toward the south along the road, which goes down from Jerusalem to Gaza. Uh, this is desert. And so he arose and went, and behold, a man of Ethiopia, a eunuch of great authority, under Candace, the queen of the Ethiopians, who had charge of all treasury, and had come to Jerusalem to worship. Verse 28 says, was returning and sitting in his chariot, he was reading Isaiah the prophet. And then the spirit said to Philip, go near and overtake this chariot. And so Philip ran to him and, and, and heard him reading the prophet Isaiah and said, do you understand what you are reading? And he said, how can I unless someone guides me? And he asked Philip to come up and sit with him. And the place in the scripture which he read was this. He was led as a sheep to the slaughter. And as a lamb, before his shearer, he silent. And so he opened not his mouth. His humiliation, his justice was taken away. And who will declare his generation? For his life is taken from the earth. And so the eunuch answered Philip and said, I ask you, of whom does the prophet say this of himself or of some other man? And then Philip opened his mouth and began, beginning at the scripture, preach Jesus to him. And now as they went down the road, they came to some water. And the eunuch said, see, here is water. What hinders me from being baptized? And then Philip said, If you believe with all your heart, you may. And he answered and said, I believe 
that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. And so he commanded the chariot to stand still. And both Philip and the eunuch went down into the water, and he baptized him. And now when they came up out of the water, the Spirit of the Lord caught Philip away. And so that the eunuch saw him no more, and he went on his way rejoicing. May the Lord add a blessing to the reading of his word. Amen. Amen. We are in church. For our opening hymn, let us turn to hymn number 318. 318. And we will praise the Lord together as we stand. words, we also give opportunity for those who have their thanks and their praise. We give opportunity also for those who want to mention somebody who needs special prayer, and even themselves, we give opportunity for those to do so. We just uh, want to thank God for uh, allowing the wolf that he prayed for um, to come through a successful spine operation. He was busy in the hospital and he said he may be able to come home um, in this week. Mm -hmm. Praise the Lord. Thank you pray for my children and to save family in this hospital. Okay. 
um, also a request to pray for God to open the door for us so we can continue with the feeding of the homeless. Mm -hmm. Good health. Good health. Good health. For yourself? Yeah. If I can just ask the church to keep Anthea's supervisor in prayer. Anthea is not here today because she's attending a funeral. Uh, supervisor's husband passed away from a heart attack, uh, 50 years old, and he leaves behind uh, two twin girls, uh, aged 11 and 12. So we just pray that God will comfort them today and uh, he will draw close to them, especially the girls. It's it's not. Uh, it's very sad when children lose a parent, mm -hmm. and especially a a father. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Apostle Ryan as well. Shall we? Merciful Father in heaven, indeed, it is a privilege that we find ourselves here before you in your house of worship. We say thank you for the blessings bestowed upon us this week. For indeed, you have given it unto us, and we have taken it, and so we give thanks unto you. Whatever we have experienced, Lord, whether they be good or bad, we come before you, and we lay them before you to give you honor and glory, and also to ask of you for mercy. Forgive us our trespasses, O Lord, and cleanse us from our unrighteousness. Lord, there were petitions this morning, and you have heard all of them. You have heard a praise and a thanksgiving for Rahul, who has and is recovering from a back injury. We want to say thank you for what you have brought him through, and also for the healing that you have given him. And may he be strengthened, O Lord, to give testimony unto you because of our prayers and because of your hands in his life. We pray for Sister Ainsley's children. We pray that you will touch their hearts. We ask that your Lord will shake them up in this time. We know, and you know, O Lord, that it is very near to the end of this world. And there's no time to be dabbling with the things of Satan. And so we pray that you will touch them and lead them to have a closer relationship with you. We pray for safe traveling mercies also, and that you will touch Samantha's heart, and that you will keep her in the heart of her name, and where she is in the world, that she may worship you, and that those who are with her may see you in her, and therefore also worship you. We say thank you, Lord, for thus far giving good health to Sister Chester. And we ask that you will continue to heal her, strengthen her, and keep her faithful, continuing to believe in what you can do in her life. Thank you, Lord, for these blessings. You have healed all of us, O Lord, from our diseases, from our illnesses, and most of all, you have healed us from our sin. It is something that we all suffer of, and you have healed us on the cross. And we say thank you for this healing. We say thank you, Lord, that you have given unto us life. But amidst life, there is also death. And so we pray for Anthea's uh, family, the supervisor's family, who has suffered the loss of her husband. We ask the Lord that you will touch the lives of the children who have now one parent less. We ask that you will help us as a church to draw an eye unto them, that we will support them as a church family and that their pain may be healed and that they may not feel it as badly as somebody who has no hope in Jesus. Father, we pray that you will be with the homeless people and that you will touch their hearts and that you will keep them faithful unto you. We know that we have challenges with feeding them. You know that we have challenges but we also know that you have a solution for us. And we pray for a solution, a speedy solution, that we will continue to work among them and help them on their way to healing from the path that they are walking on. 
and God, we are commanded in prayer and praise the Lord. We will ask that you will be with those who he has asked to pray for us. We ask the Lord that you will pray for them and keep them faithful unto you. And we ask the Lord that you are the one who is able to do these things and therefore we can only come to you. There are those, O oh Lord, who have mentioned prayer requests in their hands and we ask that you will hear them too. We bring before you our speaker this morning, Pastor Lang. We ask that you will bless him in a mighty way for the new venture that he has to take on, O oh Lord. We pray for his family, that you will strengthen them. And in the work that they are doing, let them continue to remain faithful unto you and serve you wherever they may be sent to. For this church, we pray, O oh Lord, that you will keep us faithful in the hall of thy name. And bless us according to our needs and according to your will for us. Our praise to the Father in Jesus' name and through the Holy Spirit. We have the David family from Riverside. <coughs> welcome to you, brother and sister. Amen. There was another one looking, but welcome. And then we have also Sister Corrie in Africa. Welcome, my sister. Amen. All right. Um, here we have those who, who did not write their names in the book, but you can just put up your hands. Just, just put up your hands, sister. Join, put up your hands, sister. <laughs> 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 Welcome, welcome. Amen. God bless you for coming and worshiping. Those ladies at the back, you can also put your hand up. Welcome to you as well. God bless you for coming to join us here this morning. And why I did not mention this here is because they're going to perform a special item. This is on a song. And they have been gracing us all morning. You know, with the beautiful songs and really listen to some heavenly music. And, um, you know, while they come up, I also want to go out and put Pastor to the second desk. Pastor, it might be the last time I'm shaking your hand. You're welcome, you here. The Lord bless you as you worship with us. That you can have a seat now while they sing for us. Thank 
Sweet experience standing here this morning. Um, Brother Manuel gave a good report on the session, and uh, it was early Monday morning where we were still waiting for the reports to come in. And uh, it was a surprise when I heard my name then being read for the Northern Region. And uh, obviously, they did speak to me before. But there's something that when I started my ministry and my family that we said wherever God leads, I will go. Amen. And um, we just got settled here. In actual fact, our names were read last week. I'm not yes. sure. <laughs> we had Weinberg Church as a family. And it took us, I think it was four years to move our membership from, from PE where we started. So it was exciting experience to have our names read here at the church. And then to find out the next week that we are then moving. So friends, yes, we have really 
grown, grown close to Weinberg Church and also the, the, the churches in the district. I think it's one of the best districts. It is being recorded, eh? <laughs> uh, And I know that there are many ministers that would like to flock to be here. Uh, it, it makes you feel comfortable, you feel at home. I want to thank you for the love that we experienced as a family. But I'm sure this is not the last that we will see each other because Cape Town is my home. Amen. And um, I know that we are, we are all journeying together to a better place. Um, it's good to see family and friends that we, we love and care for. And I just want to encourage us that if we do not see each other again, may we see each other at the party gates. Amen. Amen. So I wish all the best for Weinberg. We did such wonderful things together. Um, but I'll keep on praying for the church that God will succeed in his mission. Uh, we are definitely living in the last days. And um, I don't think there's any more time left. And so we need to keep near to the cross. When I look at the experience of Job, and I'm sure that all of us are acquainted with the ex his experience. He was unaware of the attacks of the enemy upon his life. And it's that where we find that many times as Christians, we find the dilemma that when things happen in our lives, there's a tendency to ask the question, where is God? There's a tendency to question the fact does God exist in my life? And there are times that we even doubt the fact that there is a God. Friends, I don't want you to be discouraged because it can be that you can have faith in God, but you can also doubt God at the same time. And so Job was a righteous man, the Bible says. But when Satan attacked his life, and we can turn to the book of Job. There's something very interesting that I would like to share. Job chapter 1. I don't know why my pages are becoming nervous now. Yeah. I couldn't even find Job. Strange. Thank you, Albert. This is the first time. All right. Um, so Job, chapter 1. And I want you to, to read verse 1. It says that there was a man named... There was a man in the land of Uz, whose name was Job, and that the man was perfect and upright, one that feared God and assured evil, and they were born to him sons. All right, so he was a rich man. Um, and I want us to go over six. Well, maybe you just put Job there while I'm, because I want to get to that. Um, Verse 6 says, And now there was a day when the sons of God came and presented himself before the Lord, and Satan came also along with them. And the Lord said unto Satan, Whence comest thou? And then Satan answered the Lord and said, From going, Thank you so much, Elder. From going to and fro on the earth, and from walking back and forth on it. And the Lord said to Satan, Have you considered my son Job, that there is none like him on earth, blameless, upright, one, a man who fears God and shuns evil? Here we see the scenario that the question is Job was upright, but he was also fallible. Now, the question is, what happened when he lost everything? The Bible says in verse 20, 
It says that Job arose with losing his family, his belongings, everything that he has. He tore his robe and shaved his head and he fell to the ground and worshipped. And so friends, I want to just make emphasis to this dilemma that Job finds himself. He has lo lost everything that he had. He's on the verge of maybe even going mentally insane because the wife is looking at him and she says, why don't you curse God and die? But there's something that I want us to take note of that Job in the midst of his trouble, in the midst of his circumstance, the Bible says he bows down and he worships God. This is the fundamental thing for all Christians. That when we face trials, the best thing to go is on our knees and worship God. You see, we might not know the outcome to our situation. We might not know whether we will survive the storm. But what we do know, when we find ourselves in the presence of God, it is no more our problem. It's God's. And so we find that this man, eunuch Ethiopian, and I want us to go back to our the book of Acts. This morning we will be focusing on this chapter. Acts chapter 8. Verse 26. And so we here we see that an angel comes to Philip. Now I want to see the dynamics here. That God intervenes for his children. Job, at the end, when he worshipped God, God inadvertently restored what is lost two times. If you go to the end of, of the book of Job, you see that God gives back everything what Job had lost. In actual fact, when Job then looks back, he can realize that he serves a mighty God. And so we see that the angel of the Lord is actively busy, not helping Philip actually, but wanting to give a command to Philip. And what he says to Philip, he says, Philip, arise and go toward the south. Now, if you are a Christian, you should be obeying God's word, isn't so? Mm -hmm. Whatever the Bible says, we need to obey. Whatever God says. And so Philip is not a disciple. We realize that Philip is, is a deacon. Now, uh, God can use anyone. Amen. Can somebody say amen? amen? And this Philip was found witnessing in a place called Gaza. It is close to Samaria. It in actual fact, uh, if you go back into history, Jesus meets a woman at the well. Can you remember that? Yeah. And that was in Samaria. In actual fact, the Jews never went to Samaria. And now we can see that Jesus, when he speaks to this woman, <laughs> He is speaking to try and convert her to know who he is. I'm the, the, the water of life. And so the woman hears that this must be a prophet and she runs back to Samaria. And then Jesus spends three days there with her in that city. He doesn't heal no one. He just preaches and people become converted. Now we see when Christ leaves the scene, Philip now finds himself in the same place, witnessing freely, where people can accept him. And we see how God uses now Philip to go and reach someone that God needed to win. I want to tell you, friends, that God is listening to your prayers. There's someone in your life that you want to win to God. Amen? There's a, a child that is not here today that you want to be here this morning. You, even some of us might sit here this morning feeling not connected with God. But I want to tell you that the forces of heaven is busy working on behalf of your prayers. Amen. It's important that we stay worshipping before God. Amen. Amen. Like Job, in the midst of our trials, let us worship him. And so the angel God sends to Philip and then he tells, arise and go because I want you to meet a man. But this man is in the desert. Now, none of us like, uh, we all like to travel, even so. We like to go to places where we can enjoy the scenery, 
uh, take some nice photos and selfies for those that like selfies and post it there so people can feel jealous <laughs> that they wish they were with you. And so we like to go to places that are suitable. And so when God says, go in there for as a church, you say, Lord, I, 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 I rather want to go there and not where it's so difficult. But here Philip doesn't choose. God says, I want you to go to the desert where there's no water. I want you to meet someone there. And so God, God sends Philip, and Philip says, Here am I, Lord, send me. And so he rose and he meets this man. And I want us to, to read from verse 27 again. And he rose and went, and behold, a man of Ethiopia, you know, of the great authority under Candace, the queen of the Ethiopians, were in charge of all the treasury, and he came to Jerusalem to worship. Can you see that word worship again, friend? Mm. This man was Ethiopian. And if you understand the Jewish religion, that no one outside the Jewish faith can go and worship in the temple. Even though, even though he knew that he was going to meet up with this communal nation, for the, maybe not the color of his skin, but because of his not being a Jew, but yet he seek to find out this God of the Jews. And we see that he goes to Jerusalem and he might, we're not sure what the historians say that he might not have entered the temple, but he worshiped at the temple. And then when he, when he was refreshed, he left. Now on his way going back home, after seeing and worshiping God, he goes back thinking that his tasks are done. Thinking that he has done his part, we find that God sends someone to meet him on the road. And so we see that while Philip meets this eunuch, a rich man, a man that had a, a retinue of people following him because he came from Ethiopia, it was far, he was the treasurer at that time. So we see that he was an important person. <coughs> And so, as Philip meets him, Philip, Philip asks him, what are you reading? Verse 31 says, uh, verse 30, And so Philip ran to him and heard him reading the prophet Isaiah and said, Do you understand what you are reading? And he said, How can I unless someone guides me? The Bible that we have before you, it's simple to understand, isn't it so? Yes. There's some that are shaking their head. <laughs> Not always. And that's why you find out that when a person wants to be baptized, <coughs> he needs to go and study because there are certain things he might not understand. <laughs> now, what is vital of understanding the Bible that this Ethiopian understood the Chronicles, and uh, he had the book of, of Isaiah with him. It was very expensive that time to even have a Bible. People never had Bibles. Uh, because he was a rich man, he could uh, um, afford a Bible. The historians say that the Bible that he had could have cost over 100,000 rand. It said something, eh? In today's money, thank you. Yeah. I wonder if, it, if, it, if we would spend so much money for a Bible if we knew it was the Word of God. Mm -hmm. Friends, will you, will you take money out of your last out of your banking account to buy the Word of God? Today the Word of God is free. Mm -hmm. It's so available and yet we find that, that many people avoid reading mm -hmm. the Word of God. And so we see that this man went out of his way, not being a Jew, trying to understand the Scriptures, and here God intervenes. I, I like this God that we serve. That God is always there to intervene for us. Amen. Sometimes we think we have, we have covered it. Sometimes we think we, 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 we got all things in our hands and, and we struggle because it seems that God doesn't answer our prayers. Many young people might sit here today and not even think about being baptized. Because it seems that my life is fine. I'm okay. But I want to tell you, friends, the further we are from God, 
the further we are not okay. And Satan would like to break that bond that we have with God. And that's why we see all the apostles, all the disciples, all the patriots, whenever they found a situation they could not handle, they worshiped God first. Job never complained. This, this young man or this, this Ethiopian eunuch asked the question to Philip. He says, well, I'm reading this. I do not understand, but maybe someone can help me. And so we find out that here Philip helps to explain what he's reading. And what is he reading? He's reading about the life of Christ. He's reading that Christ sacrificed himself for us. Even at that moment, he did not know who this Christ was. All he knew was the God of the Jews. And so we see that as he explains to him and says that God is not just there far away that we cannot touch. In actual fact, there's a God that actually came down. The Bible says in the word became flesh. A God that came down so that he could be with us. So that he could be one like us. God, the Bible says that for God so loved the world that he Amen. is only begotten, Amen. that whosoever Amen. should not Amen. but have everlasting. <laughs> that verse was spoken to one man, but yet it's the most powerful verse for every Christian that God says that if you want to be saved, believe in the Son of God. Amen. Believe in Jesus Christ. And so as the Ethiopian was hearing the words by Philip that my friend there's someone that God came so that we can see who God is that there's a God that loves you beyond that you can, you don't even know that you love yourself the way God loves you I said to someone they're worried about their children and I, and I also mentioned to Sister Regina that I always say that God loves your children more than you love your children. God knows your situation better than you know your situation. When I heard of that young man, I call him young, because 50 is still young, isn't it? To die of a heart attack and leave a family behind is not easy. We don't know where our lives are going to take us. But this morning I want to encourage you to stay on your knees. Pray. Because God is busy working for your family. Many times God doesn't answer in our lifetime. As I mentioned that Jacob never met his mother when he ran away. He thought that he would see his mother again, but he ended up not seeing his mother. His mother must have felt, my son, I've lost you for good, maybe even for eternity. And sometimes we think we're going to lose our children for eternity. But what happened? When the mother died, Jacob became the father of many nations. In actual fact, when the, when the resurrection day comes, there's going to be a reunion between mother and son. Friends continue to pray for each other. And as they entered and the, and the, and the carriage stopped at a water place, the Ethiopian asked the question, I now know who Jesus is. Friends, Jesus is the only one we need to meet. The only relationship that matters. Yes, we have our relationship with those we love. But the one that's going to take us to eternity is the one with Jesus Christ. Grow that relationship with him. Ask God to help me. Help you every day. That stay close to you. Worship God. You know, it's so, so easy. And my wife is sick. She really wanted to be here today. And I said to her, you know, rest and allow God to heal. But sometimes, you know, we, we're so easy to step away and say, I'm not going to church today. I don't feel like, you know, I'm watching this movie now and I don't have time to really pray. Because I'm so interested. You know, Satan has looked for many ways to distract us in this life. Mm. We get so busy with everything that we don't have time to worship. Mm. You know, I'm speaking about fundamental things. But to be honest, many of us are forgetting. Mm. 
even myself, you can get so busy, wrapped up in the world, that we forget to worship God when He needs to be worshipped. God is working. The Holy Spirit takes away Philip after He baptizes the Ethiopian. The Spirit is still working today, friends. The Holy Spirit is still calling members to follow Jesus. God is in a business to save lives, not for this world, but for the world to come. I mentioned it many times, but heaven's interest is not the banking accounts. Heaven's interest, heaven makes interest in people. But the price of heaven is Jesus. Today, friends, we have a dear soul that after 60 years they've come back to the Lord. Amen. It's never too late Amen. to come to Jesus. The Lord. It's never too late to say, I'm sorry. Amen. I always say, when does God say, forgive you, who gives you it, leave it in. My sister, won't you come to the front at this time? Amen. Can the church say amen? Amen. amen. <clears throat> The Bible says that we need to be baptized by the water and the spirit. Amen. Amen. Many times we are we fail thinking that we just go under the water and we are right. Mm -hmm. This water will cleanse you from all unrighteousness. Mm -hmm. Today, my sister, you're making a mitten to the Lord and say, Yeah, Lord, yeah, I am. I'm following you all the way. Mm -hmm. You know, when you get married, it's an excitement. There should be more smiles here. I've seen less smiles. We should be excited because my sister is making a public decision that I'm here to follow Jesus. You can come and try and tempt her. You're not going to make it. She's gone through the studies. She has spent time with the elder. And I believe that God has prepared her for this day. We have others that are studying with the baptism class and also we are going to have another day where we're going to have baptism. But sister has been, from February, you said, you've been studying God's word. Amen. And she's been drawn close to God. Yes, yes. Amen. This morning, I want to read her the vows of commitment. Amen. And I believe that the church is here to support you. Amen. Can the church say amen? Amen. amen. As I read the profession of faith, I would like to, you may be seated, can she sit? Yes. yes. You may be seated, my sister. Number one, I believe in God the Father, in His Son Jesus Christ, and in the Holy Spirit. Amen. You see that? Amen. I accept the death of Jesus Christ. On Calvary as the atoning sacrifice for my sins and believe that through faith in his shed blood I am saved from sin and his penalty. Amen. I renounce the world and its sinful ways and have accepted Jesus Christ as my personal Savior and believe that God for Christ's sake has forgiven my sins and given me a new heart. I accept by faith the righteousness of Christ, recognizing Him as my intercessor in the heavenly sanctuary. And I claim His promise to strengthen me by His indwelling Spirit, so that I may receive power to do His will. Number five, I believe that the Bible is God's inspired word <clears throat> and it constitutes the only rule of faith and practice for the Christian. Amen. Amen. Loving the Lord with all my heart, it is my purpose by the power of the indwelling Christ to keep God's law of ten commandments including the fourth, which requires the observance of the seventh day of the week as the Sabbath of the Lord. Amen. 
As the soon coming of Jesus is the blessed hope in my heart, and I'm determined to be ready to meet the Lord and to do all in my power to witness to his loving salvation and by life and word to help others to be ready for his appearance. Amen. I accept the biblical teaching of spiritual gifts and believe that the gift of prophecy is one of the identifying marks of the remnant church. I believe in church organization and it is my purpose to support the church by my tithes and offerings and by my personal effort and influence. Amen. I believe that my body is the temple of the Holy Spirit and I will honor God by caring for it. I will abstain from the use of alcohol, beverages, narcotics, tobacco in all its forms and from the foods which God has pronounced unclean. 11. Knowing and understanding the fundamental Bible principles as taught by the Seventh-day Adventist Church, it is my purpose by the grace of God to order my life in harmony with these principles. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> 12. I accept the New Testament teaching of baptism by immersion and desire to be baptized as a public expression of faith in Christ and his forgiveness of my sins. Amen. Amen. This is the last one. I believe that the Seventh-day Adventist Church is the remnant church of Bible prophecy and that people of every nation, race and language are invited and accepted into its fellowship. I desire to be a member in this local congregation of the world church. Amen. What does the church say? Amen. Amen. My sister, may God bless you as now we prepare to emerge you that you'll become one with Christ in his death and in his resurrection. Amen. And so we pray that God's spirit will anoint you at this time. We're going to ask you if you can just stand for a moment. If the elder can just help. Um, I'll ask the other elder to also come up. And just have a prayer before we do the baptism. And then after that, we are going to vote her in as the member of Weinberg Church. Can the church say? Amen. Amen. Let's just have a prayer. You might close your eyes as we pray together. The Bible reminds us that there is rejoicing in heaven when one sinner that is lost comes to repentance. Lord, we know, God, that there is rejoicing not only in heaven, but here at Weimar Church as well. Thank you so much that you have been with my dear sister Prince Lou, that you have carried her all these years, that even today she can show that she loves you with all her heart, and her desire is to meet you when you come in the clouds of heaven. At this time, Lord, I pray that as she goes into the, the pool for baptism, as she dies in Christ, and then arise in Christ in the newness of life, that you will fill her with your Holy Spirit. We know, Lord, she's not perfect, but you are going to transform her to be like you. That every day as she draws close to you, Lord, you will keep her in the hold of your hand. At this very time, Lord, I pray for her family. And I ask God that you know her desire. You know her prayer. And so, Lord, I pray that you continue to act in her behalf, like you do with each one of us, Lord, that our prayers are not too heavy to be listened to by our God and our Father. That you are there to answer our prayers, Lord. And so, God, in your time, we commit her family to thee. And we commit each of us here today. Lord, there might be someone here that has never made this decision to be baptized. And so, Lord, we pray that you also work on their hearts as they see 
this experience of one that has committed himself fully to thee. Lord, may you speak to us now. This is my prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 At this time, we will prepare for the, for the baptism. I'll ask that I hand over to the elder. I'm not sure if the song leaders or there's another special item. My sister Virginia would like to say something before we do the baptism. Um, maybe somebody can just help with the mic. Yeah. Just want to find it. I just want to say thank you to God for giving me another chance. I was due to I was reared in a seven day Adventist home. I went to Good old training school and I finished my matric. But for circumstances which I couldn't help, I was forced to leave the church when I was 18. I'm now 79. And for 60 years, God has been working on me. And I'm so glad that he's given me another chance as old as I am. And I want to really thank him. And I want to thank those friends of mine. I see her standing here. She was a friend of mine when I belonged to church in Claremont Church. And she encouraged me and she invited me. And when I came here to Weinberg Church to visit, it was like coming home. Amen. And I thank all the people here who have been so welcoming and so friendly and loving towards me. And I give God all the thanks and the praise and the glory for his chance, his second chance again. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. My dear sister Virginia Prince Lou, because of your love for Jesus and because you have decided once again to follow him with all your heart, with all your soul and with all your mind, I now baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. 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 that wants to commit their lives to Jesus through baptism. You know, we're not sure what tomorrow holds. We are here today, and tomorrow we might be gone. And sometimes we get this opportunity to say, Lord, here I am. I've wandered far away from thee. Now I'm coming. Oh. It has happened to our dear sister Virginia for 60 years. Can you imagine? It's more than a lifetime to many of us. But God was gracious to her. Amen. God was merciful to her. And you know, sometimes not all of us will get that opportunity. The devil is here. He knows our hearts. He knows where we want to. But I know that God is speaking to, it, to, to you this morning. Is there anyone that wants to say, Lord, here am I. I want to, in the next baptism, I want to be baptized. If you want to make that commitment, won't you stand so I can pray for you at this time? I'm not, I'm not saying today that you're going to be baptized, but in the near future. If there's anyone here that feels the Holy Spirit speaking to their hearts, now is your time. Yes. 
looking at Kaurav Swarup is not a, a one that's far away from home now. I wandered far away from home. Someone, Lord, that was away from you for 60 years, Lord, and now has come home to me. Lord, what a privilege and an honor. And so, Lord, we want to recognize our sister Gracie, Lord, that has already indicated that she wants to be baptized. I pray, God, that you will be with her in a special way. Lord, more of our young people need to make a decision to follow you. I know there are those that have requested, and so, Lord, I pray for them as well, that you'll keep them faithful to thee, Lord, that as they have started this journey, that is not the end, but it's the beginning of a wonderful relationship with Jesus. And so, Lord, I want to also recognize that there's someone here in the house, in the church, that is struggling <coughs> To make a total commitment to thee. Lord, you know their hearts. And I know God. Sometimes we think it must happen in our time. But your time is the perfect time. And so Lord, when the time is right, I pray Lord that you bring them closer to thee. And never leave our children, never leave those that we are praying for. Please let your Holy Spirit speak to their hearts. Lord, let us redeem the time that we have and let us be faithful to Thee until we meet Thee in the clouds of heaven. And now may the grace of God and the sweet communion of the Spirit remain with each one as we have witnessed one of the most powerful events for each humanity, Lord, for humanity, for each one of us. And so, Lord, we commit Sister Virginia to Thee in the name of the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Five one six.
Oh, the